Hello everyone, welcome to Marion's World in week 7 of the Stitch Journal and it's coming along a treat and today um, I'm being able to finish the second page that I've been working on and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Two new stitches. The first of today's stitches is going to be split stitch and I use this stitch a lot because it makes a really straight line and a narrow line if you're using either um, embroidery cotton or a cruel wool and it doesn't make it's a thinner line than you can get with stem stitch if you're using sort of more than just a few strands of thread because I want to apply it along here I'm going to show you the stitch on my spare bit of cotton first because I'll be doing it in this dark brown with all six strands I've just got this old bit of cotton sheet um, and I've ripped off a piece of a couple of pieces of cotton of let me just get my measuring tape it is well one and three quarter inches wide about just under five centimeters wide and I need a couple of these ripped down out of the out of the sheet um, I've got, oh I've already got my needle, I've got a, a sharp, um, I keep getting asked about what sizes of needles I use and to be perfectly honest I actually don't know, I'm just self taught and it's never been a bother to me what needles I used as long as they do the job, so if I need I need a thicker, if I'm using a thicker thread or a yarn or some cruel wool I obviously need a larger eye and probably a sharp point and if I'm using a finer thread I want a finer needle with a smaller eye and a sharp point and if I'm using tapestry wool and I'm weaving like like I was weaving these stitches last week then I would want a tapestry needle that had a blunt point you just use whatever you need to get the job done and I think the the thing that you're really concerned about is that the eye of the needle is what is making the hole in your cloth to pull the thread through. So if you have an openish weave, which this is, it's not it's not a really tight weave, then your needle eye is going to easily pull through your cloth and the size of the hole it makes should be equivalent to what you're what you're trying to pull through so if you are using quite a thick thread or a yarn and your needle your needle eye is too small it won't make a, the hole big enough and then you'll struggle to pull your thread through if you put your yarn or your thick thread th with a bigger eye the eye will then enable your thick yarn to be pulled through easily. The tighter the weave, the sharper a point you need to get that um, through. I have heard in various places of people using pliers to pull needles through. And in all of my years of sewing, I have never, ever ever used a pair of pliers to pull a needle through it seems to me that if you if you can't get your needle through I mean a bit of a tug is fine but to resort to pliers means something somewhere is not quite right um, even with leather there are needles that have the sharp triangular types of points that mean that you're making a proper hole or you need to put the hole in so that the needle goes through. You shouldn't be needing to resort to a plier, I don't think. Not for normal embroidery or stitching anyway. But I just, it just amazes me really. However, so it's much the size of the eye to the thread that you're using and match the point to what fabric you're using. So the, the tighter the weave, the sharper the point. If you're happy using a great big long needle, I quite often I use a sashiko needle. And if you're happy sewing with a tiny needle, then sew with a tiny needle. It's 
it's your sewing and whatever makes it pleasurable for you to do use that i think don't get too hung up on the number it's it's whatever makes your sewing pleasurable and gets the job done without ruining your thread or ruining your fabric because you will if you try to pull a thick thread with a small eye even if you've got the thread through the eye if it's too big for the eye of the needle you will ruin your thread by constantly making friction pulling it through the material so it's match the eye to the thread and the point to the fabric and that's <laughs> that's about the best i can say to you um I just don't know the I don't know the numbers, I'm afraid. Anyway, I will oh I'm about to make a new needle book and because this one this one's uh, how old? Twenty eleven I made this one and I actually used bits of metal from gold work and it's coming apart here and I keep catching and I thought maybe it was time to retire this one and make an, and, a, and it does that as well it sort of doesn't keep straight so I'd quite like another one it's just getting a bit long in the teeth anyway that's that's likely to be coming up because I need to do it but I've got my needle anyway so I've got a biggish eye and a very sharp point I've got all six strands and I'm about to show you split stitch I'm just going to do it in hand but if you wanted to put your material in a hoop then that's also perfectly fine there are two ways to do split stitch I'm going to come up first the first way is to take your needle down make a stitch that's about five millimeters and then you make a little backwards stitch that comes up inside of the thread now hold that up so you can see and you're actually splitting the stitch that you've done before i like this stitch a lot because it and, you, and because it takes so little thread on the back and if you're if you're trying to be thrifty with your thread then this means that all of your thread, and sometimes thread can be quite expensive, the, the vast majority of your thread is now on the top of your fabric where it can be shown off and it's not being wasted underneath your fabric. So again, I've taken that stitch forward. I come up inside and split that whole stitch again. It's exactly what it says really, a split stitch. It's easier to do this one possibly in a hoop because it does need those two actions. You can't do it in one action because you need this stitch to be laid on the fabric. Now you can do these quite long, but you don't need to split it halfway back. You just split into the, into the end. It's just a few millimeters from where the previous stitch has gone down. And so that is definitely easier to be done in a hoop, but you can see how you get a really lovely line. If you do it small, it can quite often look like a chain stitch. In fact, I can do it small. I can just go, just to make a small stitch. And come back up. Definitely has to be done in two actions if you're doing it in your hand or in a hoop this method can only be done in two actions i'll show you the back in a second well there it is done in a smaller than these great big long ones and on the back and just get this little dotted line so there's another way of doing it and that's to do it as a back stitch and this is definitely easier for um, for working in your hand and so to do it as a back stitch you're going to just start off as if you're doing back stitch 
pull the thread through you can do this in one action and then there's your stitch already waiting to be split and you can just go straight into it and do another back stitch Now this is definitely an easier method if you're doing it in hand, I would think. Because your stitch is lying there already. You can do the action with one gesture, if that pleases you. And in the end, the look of it is identical. There's no difference at all in the actual look of the stitch on the front. Now go down just and you're just going down a few millimetres from the end of the previous stitch. You just slide your needle right in. There's no difference to the stitch from the front. But on the back, in essence, you have quite a big difference between these tiny little dotty stitches here and all of this overlap of back stitch, almost like stem stitch here. And so because of that, I almost always use the traditional forwards method instead of the back stitch method. But it doesn't really matter. The, in the end, what you get on the front is identical. And it's a really nice stitch. It's one of my favourites. You can see what I mean there by it looking a little like a chain stitch. So what I was wanting to do on this is to get that lovely rounded edge that's on here. It's so rounded and soft looking. And so I thought by doing these strips like this and then just folding them in half, I did think about putting some stuffing in there. I definitely could. I'm going to lie it in and see what it looks like. Oh, maybe I do want that. Just going to add that little extra. I don't particularly want this end to be raw, I don't think. So I'm going to fold that in as well. Like that. I'm going to start on this one. And so what I want to get in the end is... I want to have this edge, because this was just a placeholder really, to, so I could work, or you could see where the edges of your brackets were. I want to put this over there and overlap onto all of this, so you can see that one, these ones are underneath that one. And I'm going to leave this edge free and just stitch it down from there. I'm going to leave the raw edge because I quite like it. I can just hold everything because as it pleats in it's going to give the lovely variations that the bracket fungus actually has. And I'm going to split stitch this along so I'm going to hold my hold my fabric this way around. Just going to make sure that's over there. Pick up my needle. And I'm going to split stitch forwards because that's the way I quite like to do it. So down there, up within the previous stitch. And I'm going to make a little jump along. I'm probably using about a quarter of an inch. So as I'm going, I'm going to just pull this fabric round and pleat it as I go. I'm going to make sure I've got that little extra bit in there. You can always not do that on the next one if it doesn't look right. Could use a length of yarn even just to give it a little roll. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a pleat there. And carry on. I'm going to keep about the same distance away from the edge all the way round because I want another row of stitching, at least another row of stitching. 
on here in that yellow ochre colour as well. Down. These stitches are about, I would say, a quarter of an inch long. And they're really, really good for doing curves or just anywhere where you need that nice line. And as you work along, just be aware of where this edge is going. You want it to just cover up the bracket that's below it. Now I'm just going to cover that piece up. And I'm not going to pleat it all the same way either. Sometimes I'm just going to put a tiny bit in that's more of a little gather as I go. And this is really going to look very three dimensional. I want to just let it fold the other way for a change. I don't want it to look like a sort of a pleated skirt. It needs to look more organic. Just hold your fabric however it pleases you to hold it as long as you, where you're stitching is nice and flat for you that's the main thing and not to be pulling things tight. I've got a nice bit of a curve here so I'm just going to pull it round and wherever those folds lie I'm going to just go with them as I go around the corner. And of course in this type of a project uh, with the bracket fungus the stitches can be whatever length is suitable. They can be short ones, long ones. If you were doing this on a more formal piece of embroidery you'd be aiming for all of those stitches to be the same length. I'll just have a look and see how that's progressing. That's going to make the most perfect, most perfect shape. And if you're doing a more abstract piece, I hope you find some way of working in the uh, folded piece of fabric as well as the split stitch. Because it's, it's just nice to experiment with those types of things. You never know what you might use them for in the future. I'm coming to the end of this piece of fabric and need to join on another. So that's going to be easy to do because I can just pretend it's one of the folds. And the rounded edge is working really well. So I'm going to pull this new piece of fabric in here, put a fold in and put it over the top of those and wrap it around and it's just going to look like another fold especially if I make a crease at the same time it'll not be any bother so that's what I'm going to do but I'll get another bit of thread in my needle and I'm set to go again I'm keeping the edges together all the time so I know I'm sewing through both of them together been watching all the um, leaves start to just begin to unfurl. So this next page here is going to be lots of leaves and there's I think I'll, I think I'll do lots and lots of individual leaves and each one will be able to do some new stitches so that's really I've got that in my head already. So here I'm nearly at the end I'm just going to cut it here a bit longer than I need it because I want to fold that edge in because I don't want the raw edge to be at the top of my um, stitch in my page I'm just going to fold that in so that it just comes shy of the page edge I'm going to make sure that my last stitch is not beyond that blue line which is the edge of my page I'll just take it down there so I know I'm securing the edge of that roll of fabric 
and have a look. Take a few threads off. And that's worked really nicely. So this edge is going to get left loose. I'm going to fill in the this edge onto these one, two, three. In fact, I'll start with this bottom one. I should always start with the bottom one. I don't know why I don't. So I'm going to start with it square. And then immediately put some pleats in that will pleat it. Get the first stitch in. I'll not put a I'll not put a little stuffing in here and see what difference it makes. And then you'll have a choice. You'll be able to see whether you like it with something inside or not. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to get all of these other ones done. If my video would end up too long otherwise. Although I'm never sure what's supposed to be the optimum time. When I very first started, my daughter and uh, my brother were saying, don't do longer than 10 minutes. Uh, nobody will watch it. 10 minutes is even too long. But I think because they were coming from a place of watching different things. And so they're just used to scrolling and, and not not having not watching something for very long and um my brother just said the other day he said i don't know how how you get away with videos as long as yours i was going i know but how are you going to show people things if you don't do it very long anyway if you've got any thoughts on the matter let me know do you think they're too long or are they about the right size I do know it takes me ages sometimes to edit them down. So that's because sometimes I'm stitching for sort of four hours. But that's just unac unacceptably long. Maybe I should do one that's actually the right length of time. That would be interesting. Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to just do more of this along and I'll get this, this and this one done. And then I'll be back to you. I've just finished <clears throat> going along the bottom of this one <clears throat> and thought I'd show you the difference between the one that has nothing in the middle and the one that had the little bit of fabric in. It's actually definitely got something more about it and I quite like it so I'm going to definitely put something in these two here but I'm going to experiment again and I'm going to just use this bit of wool roving. So I've got my strip ready. I'm going to put that in the bottom like that and I'm going to stitch it because I think I quite like, I can feel the difference. And if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from um, tuning into the stitch journal is to experiment. Uh, if it doesn't work out, well, it's just a step on to what does work out. And and all of that is perfectly fine. And so for me here, the experiment was, did I want that to be stuffed or not? And that little bit of fabric has, believe it or not, made a difference. Because I can feel the difference of the one that has nothing. And I like the one that has something. So I'm going to up the game and put this little bit of wool roving in the bottom this time. I've got all my edges applied now and I really like the way the the yarn went in so for me that little extra piece of thickness inside has made a good difference for what I'm doing and I know I've covered up the stem stitch that was underneath but I always knew I wanted this rounded frilly edge and I, I was just using that as a place marker almost. I've got six strands in my needle. Um, I'm just going to come along. I'm going to start at the bottom this time. I don't know why I keep starting at the top. And I'm just going to running stitch along this edge. I want them to be quite close together. So I'm going to take a small stitch at the back and a longer stitch at the front. And just come along. And then I'm going to come back with probably the stem stitch or the chain stitch. And if the front fabric got, it gets caught down, that's fine. And if it doesn't, that's also fine. So I hope you just carry on experimenting. 
your own selves on how you would like to use the stitches and how you want your page to be looking. I think I'll do the backwards chain stitch again. So I've started with a little tiny line, I'm going to go under that, down where that stitch came and take a backwards stitch. I'll work back along like that through the two legs of the chain before down where the stitch started and a backwards stitch I've finished all my backwards chain and I've taken the brown stranded cotton and I've just done a running stitch along inside all the way along and now I still feel I've got one or two open bits that I'd rather were filled in and I'm go uh, so I've changed my, my needle to a large eye and a sharp point and I've got the tapestry woolen again and I'm just going to herringbone to carry on that but I'll do it interwoven into them to just fill those pieces in I just feel as if I want this this little piece to be finished today because there wasn't enough to take it to next week and so the second stitch I'll be doing today will actually be a stitch that's putting the whole page together I know a lot of stitch journals might just be the stitches and I looked around and there were so many people showing how to do stitches but sometimes it's just nice to know how to use them creatively and so that's what my stitch journal is aiming to be is a little bit more of a creative one and so show the stitches and then show them being used to actually do something nice with them rather than just the stitch and then what do you do I'm very pleased with that so I've just about finished this but the last thing that I need to do now is this little piece here that hasn't got anything on and so I thought what would look good is this black which will balance my page out so I've gone and got a bit of my velvet I don't want it to be creased I don't want it to be padded I just want to sew that on and I've got um, I've changed my needle and I've just pulled a dark thread out of my out of my tangle so I'm going to start and stitch this black velvet on just by turning under the first little edge because this will be the outside edge of my page and I don't particularly want a raw edge on this bit I'm going to get it laid in ready and I'm just going to carry on stitching that down all the way along under that last piece of um, folded cotton I just want it to be underneath so that when I'm finished that fold of fabric is going to come down on top of it. Really what I'm saying is I should have started from the bottom upwards but you know I didn't and so I just have to just have to work with the way that I'm doing it. I know we're covering up that first bit of stem stitch but that's okay, it was good practice anyway. Just put a pin in here to hold that in the right place. And as I get to this end, I'm going to cut the f cut this velvet and leave enough just to turn under. Slipping stitch down to the bottom. And now I'm going to turn under and stitch along my line. Just with a slip stitch. I've finished putting the black there and I think that's made a really really nice finish to the page on mine definitely the black mirrors this top piece and it shows the rest of them up I thought the next stitch to show you would be the stitch to put the pages together and actually what I'm going to do is just cut back this edge just to about a half an inch I don't want all of this here. I'm going to cut it back to there. Just take that off. 
So now that this two page is actually completed, I can sew these together. So I'm, I'm not going to iron anything because I don't particularly think it's necessary for what I'm doing here. But if you want to iron and you've done sort of you've done your stitches in a different way, by all means iron them. And I'm going to finger press under on my page lines. And so the next stitch that's getting done is ladder stitch. A ladder stitch is a mending stitch. It's not really an embroidery stitch that you can use, but you can use it to mend things, put two pieces of fabric together almost invisibly. So when I used to mend the children's clothes when they were smaller or they got a rip in something, they always used to call it the magic stitch. So I'm finger pressing both sides. I'm going to put them accurately together and put a pin in. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom. So to do ladder stitch, it is sort of a, a mending stitch, an invisible stitch. Normally you would want to use your sewing machine thread, just normal thread, in a matching colour to your fabric. But because I'm trying to make it showing up on the camera, I'm going to use this same black thread that I've got from my tangle. And to do it, you can hide your knot under the fold to start off. And the whole idea of this is that it is an invisible mending stitch. So I've got my two sides finger pressed in. I'm going to hold them together. Put pins if you wish. I'll put pins further down. And you go from one side to another and back again. But you don't make any diagonal stitches on top at all. It's all got to be hidden. I'm going to go from here straight across to the other fold, put my needle in and put my needle under the fold just by about five mils or quarter of an inch and come out on the same side. You don't need to pull it tight yet. It's sort of quite useful to see where all the stitches are. And they come straight across again, straight over to the fold nearest to you and take another, the same stitch, quarter of an inch-ish stitch. And you can leave it open. Make sure those are held nicely together. Go straight back across to the other fold and take your quarter inch and back to the front. And you work back and forwards till you have a little ladder like that and then when you're ready when you've done a few stitches you just pull your working yarn and you pull the stitches tight and what you'll get is that even though I've used black thread there you can't really see the stitching at all I can there just here but if you're using a thread the colour of your background fabric that stitch will disappear altogether. Hold your page nicely and just put a couple of pins in like this. It'll just hold it to stop the to stop the two pages slipping apart. Put another pin there. Put them straight down instead of along. And I'm going to put another pin there and so now I'm going to hold it but every time I'm taking a stitch I am just going to make sure that enough fabric is folded in and I'm working along the blue you can see is my water soluble um, pen that I mark things out with so I'm on the front so I go to the back one, straight across, pick up the fold, straight across, 
straight back across to the front fold and pick up the fold and you can see why it's called um, ladder stitch because you actually do make the little ladder and you're not really supposed to be pulling it tight on every stitch it's, it's quite helpful to see where each stitch before has been you make maybe four or five little stitches and then when you've got four or five in pull them tight and you will close up that seam really beautifully I'm going to go right the way along here so to the front pick up and you can make these smaller if you want but really they don't want to be any bigger this is about the biggest I would make them about that quarter of an inch and you're trying to be straight across I'll take that pin out and this is why it's, um, uh, the important bit is to make sure they're folded in accurately there's another few pull them up but then you see why the children thought it was magic stitch remember once um, repairing Luke's uh, wax jacket that had a huge rip it almost ripped the pocket off and then I went with the magic stitch and then waxed it afterwards and it was perfectly fine. I just I just ladder stitched around the tear. The pocket had tear, torn off and torn a straight line right down the front of the coat. But it was it was an easy repair in the end. And pull along, don't pull upwards, pull along the line that you're travelling in. And do the same at the do this at the other edge. Okay, so now there's a first page and a second page sewn together. So there's number two finished and its edges are all nicely finished off. Ladder stitched them in and I think that's been very, I think that's been a very successful piece of stitching. But we've done um, some padding, padding here, padding along these. I really liked having the wool in actually. I'm not sure whether you can see the difference, but that's a very rounded edge in comparison to this, which is quite flat. But it's whatever, if you like the rounded edge, that's how to get it. And if you like it flat, I'll leave it flat. Well, I'm getting ready to pick the winner of the 10,000 subscriber draw and I've had to choose a different common picker thing because um, the one I used last time said a maximum of 500 comments so it's taken me a while to find another good one anyway this will do it and I've pasted the URL of the video in there and as soon as it says six o'clock on here I just it says fetch so I'll fetch the winner and good luck everyone with um, being the winner goodness knows what I'm going to have to stitch oh yes and uh, um, don't allow duplicates don't allow replies and other than that it goes loads up the comments Pick a winner. Leslie Wright, 9210. You are the winner. So you have to um, get in touch with me. On, oh, I, I know the easiest way will be to go to the shop where you can send me a message through the shop email and I will get it and I can get your address from there uh, and we can discuss what you'd like to have stitched. So oh, thanks Leslie and sorry to everybody else but Leslie 9210 is the winner. Well I'm really pleased that that page has been finished 
and I think it looks really lovely and I hope you've enjoyed experimenting with those stitches for yourself and the bit of padding and and what have you on that so that's actually finished a week earlier than I was expecting but that's okay because this page <laughs> might take longer and it's nice to actually have a finished piece so uh, I hope you enjoy uh, practicing with ladder stitch because it's always been called magic stitch here and it is magical if you're first doing it and you see those stitches pulling your fabric together it's quite nice and uh, so the last thing to say is uh, congratulations to Leslie who's been the winner of the draw and so Leslie please just send me an email via the shop and we can discuss what you would like and um, I will see what I can do to get you something uh, sent to you. Uh, with that I think I'm just going to wrap it up for today because that's been quite a longish video comparison to what I normally do and um, yeah that's, that's all to say, lots of things going on, still on with my knitting send me the like button and yeah subscribe if you want to subscribe and just thank you very much everyone appreciate all your comments all your super thanks all everything oh i've got no and that's it so bye from marion's world and i'll see you next time happy stitching everyone bye